President Trump supporters here. Greatest movement in the history of our country. I'm fighting for you and I love doing it with everything that I have. And I will never, ever stop. We are one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. We will make America great again. Welcome. So what you need is everybody here, I'm going to assume that 99% of you are registered to vote. But I got people in this band that haven't voted in a long time. I got friends that haven't voted in a long time. You have co-workers, you have family, you have people you can influence. You need to talk to them, talk to them religiously and tell them why this is so important. That this year, more than any year, they go out and vote, all right? Thank you, guys. Wednesday just got better because the ladies are live discussing the hottest topics of the week with you tonight. And we will make America great again. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to The Right View. I'm Laura Trump, senior advisor to President Trump's re-election campaign, and I'm out on the campaign trail, as you can see, and joining me, as always, are some great ladies in politics, uh, Kimberly Guilfoyle, Mercedes Schlapp, and Katrina Pearson, who is here with me in North Carolina as well. Ladies, uh, what a week. We've had a lot happening. It seems like every week it's like five weeks packed into one. Obviously, this past week on Friday, we heard about the passing of legal giant Ruth Bader Ginsburg um, leaving a hole on the Supreme Court, leaving a vacancy that this president, um, you know, is allowed to fill as president of the United States, probably should be filling. But unsurprisingly, Democrats absolutely losing their minds over this. Um, Kimberly, I want to go to you because... Sure. You are you're our, our legal eagle here on the right view. You always have great insight into things. Um, this is not unprecedented that a, a president in an election year has the opportunity to nominate someone to the Supreme Court. Can you give us the history of this and, and really talk about the fact that this has been done so many times before? Absolutely. And I think it's an important point so that the American people familiarize themselves with the process and understand that this is not something out of uh, the ordinary. It is not unprecedented. It has actually happened 29 times where a vacancy has opened up during an election year or prior to an inauguration. And in each of those cases, the sitting president has made an appointment 
uh, successful appointment. Now, people forget what had happened four years ago. President Obama did the same thing that President Trump is going to do later this week with the help of God. He nominated a Supreme Court justice. Okay, let's remind everyone of that. So it is the president's duty to do so. And believe it or not, I agree with Senator Amy Klobuchar, who tweeted on Monday that, quote, the people pick the president, the president nominates the justice. That's how it works. We agree, Amy. Yay. Come over to our side. <laughs> Maybe this is uh, why she was passed over to be Biden's vice president, because she wants to actually follow the rule, the law, the Constitution. Now, the voters elected President Trump. What does this mean? He gets to nominate a justice. That is how it works every single time. So this is not going to be unprecedented. This is going to be President Trump actually doing his job that he was elected to do and the taxpayers expect him to do. So I can't wait for this to move uh, forward, you know, forthwith. And we cannot afford to have a vacancy during this time, especially with the election, the aftermath that we're going to be you know, dealing with. You don't do that. It's an election year. We need to get it done and we need to have those seats filled. There's a lot of work that the Supreme Court needs to do. So people are going to need to grow up, um, you know, familiarize themselves with history and get ready because it's happening and we have the votes. Yeah, newsflash for everybody. Donald Trump was chosen by the people. He is the current president of the United States, and this is part of his job to do exactly what we see happening. Great point, Kimberly. <laughs> Katrina, we know what, what, uh, what has been happening in this country. We know that there are so many important decisions that the Supreme Court ultimately opines on. Um, right. Why is this so important? Why is, is filling this seat right now, specifically in this time in American history, so, so important? You know, what's funny is everyone acts brand new. You know, like we just woke up one day and decided that everything under Trump has never been done before, unfortunately, and that's what we have to deal with. But it's extremely important for a whole host of reasons that we don't have time for today, but most importantly, the future. That is why this is so important in this time. And if people did elect this president, the Constitution is in place. He's going to be well within his right. But there's so much at stake. When you hear about how the Democrats want to transform, reimagine, restructure, I mean, they are essentially wanting to dismantle the American life as we know it, the American system as we know it. And there's only one way to preserve that system and our way of life. And that is to make sure that the Supreme Court stays constitutional not liberal activists and that has been the you know the last 60 years of the democrats pushing their policies through activist judges and thwarting the, in the legal system because they can't get their policies passed no one can get on board with this restructuring of the country so they're going to do it through the judicial system and they've already talked about adding to the supreme court and stacking it uh, and imagine what that would look like considering joe biden won't even release his list because Yes, we would be terrified if we saw this. So it's extremely important to preserve the integrity of our system, our institutions, and more importantly, for the future of American life. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I, I think we all know that, uh, oh, look, we expected the next like 40 some days up until November 3rd until election to be crazy. But let's face <laughs> it, guys, now with this, I mean, all bets are off. We know that the next several weeks in the United States of America are going to be probably some that none of us will ever forget. And Mercy, I want to ask you, because you were at the White House during the Brett Kavanaugh confirmation. I mean, what a horrific display the Democrats put on during that fiasco. The way they treated that man, the what really they put our entire country through, I thought it was absolutely disgusting. How do you think they're going to act this go around? What do you think we can expect from them? Well, first of all, Brett Kavanaugh still likes beer, so let's make sure everyone's <laughs> proud of that. But and uh, but you know, I have to tell and you, working in soup kitchens, those are the only pictures that we had before Brett Kavanaugh was working yeah, in soup yeah. kitchens, volunteering on Sunday. I know, yeah. and actually volunteering as like the basketball coach for his daughter's te team. So I mean, he's he's such a great guy, and of course, incredibly qualified to be on the court. But remember, this was about character assassination for the Democrats. This was the opportunity to try to take down someone who was very much prepared with the right background, with the right legal background. I mean, he was on the district, uh, D.C. District Court of Appeals, uh, and yet they would not want it. They wanted to stop him by going back, remember, to the high school yearbook, okay? Oh. 
crazy. Uh, so it, it's it's just very telling of how these Democrats uh, play their game. And so, uh, you know, we what I loved about the president, I want to share this moment uh, with our viewers, is there was one moment when we were in the Oval Office, the president calls Brett Kavanaugh, and he says, you know, he's checking it in on him, and this was obviously during the contentious fight, and he says, uh, Brett, he goes, you know I've got your back, you know we're going to fight till the very end and get you confirmed, and let me tell you something, any other Republican president would have dumped you, would have would have not continued this fight. And that's what I love about President Trump is that he never gave up on Brett Kavanaugh because he knew Brett Kavanaugh was the right man Thank for God. the Supreme Court. And so I do feel in this fight that we're going to have, and it is, it's beyond a fight. This is like, you know, the, the war that we have not seen in our country in a long time in the sense of of, of what's going to happen with the, the between the two parties is that the president will stand behind his pick and he will get them to the very end because he's he just he just believes in them knows that they're the right person for the job and so I'm very hopeful of the direction we're going to go in uh, and you know what we're all in it it's very it's a very painful process I assure you but it's important to stay strong I want to add one quick thing which is that the Democrats remember and Katrina you brought this up. The Democrats don't play by the rules. They no. change the rules. This is why they're in this obsessive uh, state right now of talking about court packing. And the American people need to be aware that this would d dangerously change our institutions as we know it. Why? Because their goal is to you know, win at all costs despite the fact that they trample on your liberties. And it's why this election now, we thought it was the most important election of our lifetime. No, no, no. It is it, people. This is this is this is like do or die. This is the reality that we have to make sure President Trump wins because if not, the Democrats will forever, forever change this country, only pushing through these liberal, progressives, far left ideology because of the fact that they don't play by the rules. Yeah, yeah don't say rules, liberal privilege. I'm telling that's you. It. That's it. That's a catchy title for a book I know. <laughs> 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 it's true. If you don't say so yourself. Um, you exactly. know, one of the most ridiculous arguments that the Democrats continue to make uh, since last Friday, everybody up in arms saying, precedent, precedent, precedent. I want everybody to take a look at a quick video. Let's take a look at this. What about after the election and going forward? Uh, Joe Biden was asked last night repeatedly if he wins the election, would he favor adding more justices to the Supreme Court, he would not answer that question. Where do you stand on that? This is long overdue court reform as far as I'm concerned, and I've been thinking about court reform and what we can do regarding the Supreme Court to make it so much more objective. And so this is not something that uh, a lot of us have not thought about. All right, so Kim, let's start with you. I mean, these Democrats are totally unhinged. They they literally don't even care about the Constitution of the United States of America anymore. What is your reaction to the way they've acted to what we hear these people saying? Yeah, it's like the, uh, quote, end of the uh, summer optional homework that if you feel like it, you know, that's what they think the Constitution is. Like, well, this is optional. We don't need to pay attention to it. So it really is so serious, Laura, because I think it also yeah. provides a very sobering look to our viewers what the Democrats have in store if they are given back power. Everything is on the table. The fundamental change of our democracy is on the table. Rationing of health care is on the table. Welfare for illegal immigrants and amnesty is on the table. Free lawyers for that. Uh, the censorship of free thought and expression is on the table. Socialism is a thousand percent on the table. So is communism. Let's be honest. Don't take our word for it. Just listen to the words of Senator Minority Leader Chuck Schumer, with the Democrats in power, they're telling us everything is on the table because rules don't apply to them. They can just go ahead and decide and change everything, like packing courts, all of the above. They don't care about the rule of law or due process because it doesn't apply to them. There's a different set of rules to the hardworking folks, the hardworking men and women out there that are keeping this country afloat and using their taxes to fund this government madness that these other people want to wield on this country. And that's why Trump has to win. Yeah, Katrina, you know, it's sort of amazing because I think every day, whether this president knows it or not, he exposes the hypocrisy of the left. He exposes them for truly what they are. They have 
said and done things not so long ago that all of a sudden now they're backtracking on only because this is now the balls in Donald Trump's court. I mean, I think America has to see this for what it is. Do you think people are understanding what is going on? I do, you know, and I think they do the best job at exposing themselves. You know, one of the the ongoing things that I say with President Trump from the very beginning in the, in the first campaign to now is that he just serves as this gigantic mirror that reflects back everything that's been going on. And now everyone can see it. And, you know, we're all out there traveling all over the country. The excitement and the enthusiasm is yeah. you know, feels just like it was in 2016, except more because the supporters out there are no longer quietly whispering about who they support. I mean, you told you tell the story all the time about the woman that uh, you met at the, what was it, at a Target parking lot, and she pulled out flags from her car. People are excited this time. So I do think that the last four or five years, people have seen what's really been growing under the surface with regards to the Democrat party. That's why you're seeing more black and Latino voters come out and supporting President Trump because he's really raised the bar as, as what it means to lead and to represent the people. And I think that they will be fundamentally rejected at the ballot box. That's why they're trying to steal the election. Uh, and I think that is, is insane. But when you think about it, it's, it's a good thing because people need to know who they're voting for, why they're voting for them, and what ultimately their goal is. And they can see now that there is one person who is out there fighting for them, fighting for America at home and abroad, and it's Donald Trump. So right, yeah. Katrina, they keep moving the goalposts. Like in Michigan, they want you to be able to vote, accept votes 14 days after the election is concluded. It's nuts. Yeah, they just, uh, here in North Carolina, we just heard last night that they, they pushed something forward to say that they would accept nine days after oh, the election, I mean, it's, the mail-in ballots. It's, 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 it's insane. Insane. Could you imagine? Could you imagine, though, if this was coming from Republicans? Could you imagine if oh. Republicans were moving the goalposts, changing the rules, changing the laws to steal an election? I mean, could you just imagine that? But the reality is the president is following the law. The president right. is doing the right thing, Mercy. And there is precedent behind what he is doing, yet they are still absolutely crazed on the left. I mean, what do you see happening here? Do you think we'll, we'll see something good come out of all of this? Well, we better. And that would be a Supreme <laughs> Court justice confirmation. <laughs> That's full the circle. Goal. And, you know, I have to say something really important. I think it's important to understand because this question comes up all the time. And Kimberly brought it up. When it was President Obama and he picked his nominee, the Senate was in the op opposite po party, right. the opposing right. party, the Republicans. So the two-step process is president nominates, Senate provides advice and consent and votes on the nomination. And so people always say, well, what happened to Merrick? Oh, it's the same thing as what we're seeing right now. That is not the case. Right. The people have voted. We expanded our majority in the Senate. We have a Republican president. So we can definitely move on in this process. And it was actually uh, Senator Rit Mitt Romney that came out yesterday and said, we're, you know, I'm good. We're, we should move forward with a vote. So we have the votes to get there. Uh, but I have to, you know, I think it's important to also understand that this is very telling for us right now because we have these senators, these Republican senators, in very tough races in Arizona, in Colorado, in Montana. Okay. And what do we need, know right now? It's not just voting for President Trump to get him to the finish line. It is about making sure we have Republican senators because. If it were the case that the, it were to flip into Democrat hands, you know, hello, Nancy Pelosi already started talking about impeachment again in the oh House of Representatives. Guess what? Impeachment is back. So this is the reality that we're deal dealing with. And I really have to believe, based on, I know you all have had this experience too, in traveling the country, that the American people are waking up and saying, That's no true. more. Like the Democrats, you guys, it's impeachment. It's stopping the president at all costs. Like we need people to provide common sense solutions to get us through the coronavirus, to rebuild an economy, you know, to to put money back in my pocket, and that is the key. That I think that's that that I think that's why people right now are saying, "Wait a second here." So you're going to change the the courts, you're going to add more justices, you're going to go back to impeachment. I, I just don't see that as a winning political strategy for the Democrats. Absolutely. Look, I have said it before. I'll say it again. The Democrats are literally like a three-year-old temper tantrum on full display. When they don't get what they want, you're changing the rules for me. I mean, it is it is crazy to see, but 
as a mom of a three-year-old, I'm like, well, I've seen this before. It was just like in my kitchen five minutes ago when my son had a meltdown. That's literally- Well, he's actually day. much more behaved and well restrained <laughs> than they are. You've seen those unhinged, uh, you know, oh. women on the internet going crazy and guys screaming about- Oh, that's- Gee. Kimberly, that's one of the funniest videos I've seen. Like when right? people just melt down. I remember with Brett Kavanaugh, the women in front of the Supreme Court door just- crying hysterically like the world had ended and it's like guys we will survive our country will get through you know what i mean well, this is gonna have a lot crying. more of that a lot of grown-ups acting like children crying and oh, screaming yeah. so just be ready it's coming all the more reason we need to get rid of the participation trophies in america yeah. Yeah. You're on a deal with it when you lose ladies and gentlemen all right, ladies, with that, let's take one quick commercial break. Stay with us at home. We'll be right back with more of The Right View. We turn now to that $350 billion fund to help small businesses and its workers get through the shutdown. It will be up to Congress to restock it. But Democrats blocking that move this morning. They asked for a quarter of a trillion dollars in 48 hours. I said, well, I don't, I don't think so. They objected, and I congratulate the Senate Democrats. Speaker Pelosi, what are you going to share with us from your home? Chocolate candy. Thousands have been forced to wait for hours at food banks all across the country. This is oh my chocolate, and then we have some other chocolate here. We just got it restocked with the ice cream. You don't want to eat up everything all at one time. I can't do it much longer. I'm trying so hard. We were, can we say, enjoying. Having to admit that, yeah, we're, we're starving, and I like it better than anything else. Taping this segment, there are 22 million people out of This work. specific program is about stopping job losses today. This is hurting people bad. Other people in our family go for some other flavors, but... Right now, it's survival mode. You don't know where that next something else is going to come from. I don't know what I would have done if ice cream were not invented. I just wonder. <laughs> Right View, I'm Kimberly Guilfoyle. And joining us now is Mike Davis, founder and president of the Article 3 Project. Mike, thank you so much for joining us on the program today. Thank you for having me. Fantastic. All right, so can you give an overview of what your organization does and how you were involved in the confirmation of Brett Kavanaugh? Sure. Um, we started the Article 3, 3 Project back in uh, 2019, and what we are doing is fighting for President Trump's judicial nominees uh, as they go through the Senate confirmation process. We are defending his judges once they, be, uh, once they go on the bench from the left-wing attacks, uh, defending the confirmation process, and uh, fighting back against the, the Democrats' radical assaults on judicial independence. Uh, their radical schemes like uh, term limits, court packing, and, and even impeachment. Court so, yeah, go, ahead. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, and my involvement on the the uh, Kavanaugh fight, I, I was the chief counsel for nominations on the Senate Judiciary Committee last Congress to, to then Chairman Chuck Grassley. And so it was my job to serve as the staff leader for the Kavanaugh confirmation. Remember those days, Mike. My goodness, that was quite the uh, character assassination on Brett Kavanaugh uh, with uh, the, the, the not-so-friendlies Kamala Harris and several others of those Democrat uh, Democrats on the Judiciary Committee. I can only imagine it was a uh, quite uh, quite a moment there. But you know, here we are. We're, let's let's l look at where we are right now. You've got obviously the the you know the the sad passing of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. There's now an opening on the Supreme Court, uh, and and so I ask you, we've got these you know President Trump, we've got Joe Biden. What would it mean with a Joe Biden presidency if he were to be the one to be able to pick a nominee? Well, I've written about this extensively on uh, foxnews.com and The Federalist. The difference between a Biden-Kamala Harris pick or picks and a, a, a tr Trump picks are could not be more stark. With President Trump, we have a clear track record. We have Justice Gorsuch. We have Justice Kavanaugh. We have a near record 53 federal circuit judges to the critically important federal courts of appeals. Uh, with Joe Biden, 
he's refusing to release his list. He won't tell us the type of nominees uh, he would, the type of people he would nominate to the Supreme Court. President Trump has 44 people he is considering right now, and it's on the White House's website. Joe Biden refuses to put out a list. So at the Article 3 project, we went ahead and put out a list for him of 12, 12 potential picks of the left-wing radicals uh, who demand justice and other outside uh, left-wing groups are uh, advocating for Joe Biden to put on the list. So you have people like Judge uh, Pollard on the D.C. Circuit, the second highest court in the land. Uh, she has compared pregnancy to conscription and talked about uh, pregnant women as breeders. So uh, that yeah, would make people... me a big breeder, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you would be, Mercy. <laughs> Mike, I, I want to ask you uh, uh, really quickly, why is it, though, why isn't Joe Biden releasing a list and allowing the American people to see who he might choose should he become president? President Trump has been incredibly transparent with this entire process. We remember he did this in 2016. He's been happy to do it now. What is Joe Biden hiding, and, and who else is on this potential list that you guys rolled out? I think that Biden's secret list is down in the basement with him where he is hiding. And the, the, <laughs> that's the, the, Under the his reason, pillow. That's right. The reason that he is not releasing this list is because the people, Joe Biden and really Kamala Harris, would put on the Supreme Court would scare the hell out of American voters. Yeah. These are left. These are left-wing radicals, and... Uh, this is their plan for the Supreme Court. They, if, if Joe Biden and Kamala Harris win, they are going to nuke the legislative filibuster, which means lower the vote threshold from 60 to 51 votes, and they are going to pack the Supreme Court. That means add new seats from 9 to 11 or more. We have not changed the number of seats on the Supreme Court in over 150 years since 1869, right after the Supreme, uh, after the, the Civil War, they are vowing to do it. It is in the Democrat Party platform. They, they have it in writing that they're going to do this. They call it court restructuring. Uh, that's swamp speak for packing the court, a radical scheme. And they will put on left wing activists on the court that will take away your free speech rights, your religious liberty rights. They'll take away your guns. Uh, it, it is game over Scary. America if Joe Biden wins the presidency. Oh. Yeah, you know, I, I think it's interesting too. You mentioned the restructuring. We hear those words. We hear transforming. We hear, uh, you know, reimagining, and it's all terrifying to me. And I bet many of our viewers. But I want to play this clip uh, that highlights the complete hypocrisy of the Democrats on the perspective of this nomination. The American people deserve a fully staffed court of nine. The president nominates and then the Senate advises and consents or not, but they go forward with the process. What we're seeing here, and I hope this is temporary, is a disrespect for the Constitution. The Constitution is 100% clear. The president of the United States has the right to nominate someone to be a justice of the Supreme Court. Senate's function is to hold hearings and to vote. Okay, so Mike, I have to get your reaction to that video. Uh, I, I agree with them, and I think that's right. And I think President Trump and the Senate Republicans, led by uh, Mitch McConnell and Lindsey Graham and my former boss, Chuck Grassley, I think they agree as well. And so I, they are going to move forward, and they are going to confirm President Trump's third Supreme Court nominee before the election, and she is going to make a fantastic addition to the Supreme Court. Fantastic. Can I add one more thing? Um, can you just describe, I think, to the viewers how horrific the Brett Kavanaugh situation was when you were in the Judiciary Committee? Um, well, it felt like the so-called peaceful protests that are on the streets right now were actually in the Senate uh, at the time, uh, in the, the Senate hearing room. Uh, senators were receiving death threats. They had these wild oh, mobs God. all over the halls of the Senate. Um, it was it was crazy. But I'll say this. If you thought that Justice Kavanaugh's confirmation was wild and crazy, just wait till this one. Kavanaugh's is going to look like a walk in the park. No doubt. No doubt. Gosh, everybody buckle up. I think we're in for something big. Do you think we can, Mike, can we get it done in the 30 something days left? Do you think that's possible? It is very possible. and It's very uh, it's going to happen. And the reason I mean, we've we used to have Supreme Court nominations and confirmations in the same day. It wasn't until wow. this modern era where we had these charades 
for, you know, for weeks on end. Uh, there is plenty of time. I think Justice Ginsburg was confirmed within like 42 days. There is plenty of time to get this done. And uh, there is precedent. There, these, any of these three potential picks, whether it's Judge um, Amy Coney Barrett on the Seventh Circuit in Indiana, uh, Judge Barbara Lagoa on the Eleventh Circuit in Florida, or Judge Allison Jones Rushing on the Fourth Circuit in North Carolina, they have all been appointed to the federal courts of appeals by President Trump. They've been recently vetted. Uh, uh, Barrett was three years ago. Um, Rushing was two years ago. Lagoa was one years ago. One year ago, it would be very easy to to update their vetting. The Senate just considered them. They they just all they need to do is look at their current uh, their their current rulings from the bench, and we can move forward. They, they have it's the exact same person that the Senate confirmed uh, three years ago, two years ago, and one year ago. Exactly. So it shouldn't be any uh, delay. And that when we have the votes and God bless uh, the woman of courage that is chosen, that is going to be scrutinized, but is a true patriot yeah. is going to serve her country well. So we can't thank you enough, uh, Mike, for joining us on the program. This was incredibly informative. And thank you for the work that uh, that you do. It's tireless and it's so important to the future of this country. So thank you again. And we're going to be right back after this short commercial break with more of the right view. Stay with us. Has Joe Biden ever used a teleprompter during local interviews or to answer a Q&A with support? What will your administration do to help them give them that chance? Let's move it up here. You know, there used to be a basic bargain. Joe Biden possibly, you know, reading his responses from a teleprompter. Social distancing and wearing masks, which I never do when I walk outside of this house. I never fail to do. Now, one day, on day one... Has Joe Biden ever used a teleprompter during local interviews or to answer Q&A? It's trying to distract the American people. I, can you what? say yes or no, Brett? Yes or no? You can't answer the question. You know, the rapidly rising uh, um, uh, in with... Uh, with, uh, I don't know... Uh, I'm Donald Trump, and I approve this message. The radical left-wing mob's agenda? Take over our cities, defund the police, pressure more towns to follow, and Joe Biden stands with them. Cutting police funding. Yes, uh, absolutely. Eliminating cash bail, letting criminals back on the street, violent crime exploding, innocent children fatally shot. Who will be there to answer the call when your children aren't safe? I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. And welcome back to The Right View. I'm Katrina Pearson. And before we get everyone's final thoughts, let's talk about what you at home can do to get involved and ensure we reelect President Trump because this election is only a couple of months away. Actually, 41 days now. Oh, Lord. Wow. <laughs> yeah, 41, it's like a month. Let's just say a month, folks. If you, your friends and family or neighbors, want to get involved in the fight to reelect President Trump, please sign up at armyfortrump.com. To stay in touch with the Trump campaign, text TRUMP to 88022. And finally, make sure that you are registered to vote. Deadlines are quickly approaching, and all of your hard work rests on our ability to mobilize and get out the vote. So go to donaldjtrump.com or text VOTE to 88022 to make sure that you are registered and have all of the information you need to make your voice heard at the ballot box. And now, on to final thoughts. Mercedes, let's start with you. Well, I got to tell you something. We were down in Florida on the women. It, I thought it was like the endless women for Trump buzzword. It's like <laughs> five or six days. I don't even know. I know that Laura and Katrina were on the first half. We had tag team. I came on in the second half. And uh, one of the events was really special and dear to my heart. It was uh, the endorsement of the Brigada 2506. They're the Bay of Pigs survivors. These are, uh, they endorsed the president. I was so honored to receive the endorsement on behalf of the president. And it, let me tell you, this group never endorses a president. It was the first time they endorsed the president was in 2016. It's the second time, 2020. And what's really special about these men is that they, were fighters, they, freedom fighters. They fought against the Cuban communists uh, back in the 1960s. They're survivors. 
Many of them were thrown into jail for, you know, 15, 20 years. Uh, you should see them. They were dressed up, in many of them, in their uniforms. Yeah. And really, the, the one thing they kept talking about is how President Trump stands for freedom and that they know what it is to lose all of their freedoms. And the fact is, is that this president is fighting against socialism, fighting against communism, ensuring that our country remains strong and free. And to be there on behalf of the president, you know, my father was one, was, as we know, in Cuba, he was actually one of the men who saved one of the Brigada members uh, from being killed, literally hit him in his car for two to three days, got him to the embassy of Honduras, and the man was able to be free. Uh, so, uh, you know, it was a great honor to me with, to be with such heroes who not only love this president, but love America. Well, that's such a beautiful story. And, you know, I just love the fact that we get to go all over the country and, and meet people just like this and hear all the amazing stories that we would never get to hear otherwise. And then we get to share it with everyone. That's, that's beautiful. Uh, Mercedes, thank you. Kimberly, what's going on with you? What are your final thoughts? Okay, well, mine's not quite as uh, amazing as that, but I have been on the road this past <laughs> week with the kids, and by that I don't just mean Junior, but yes, he was there. Um, I'm talking about Students for Trump and America's Young People was incredible, and we were doing a little bit of a campaign and book tour, et cetera, for Don Junior for Liberal Privilege, and we talked to all so many of the youth in America. Boy, they are fired up. We are reversing the indoctrination that we have been seeing across this country for years, and really just to see how um, motivated they are, how much they love the country, how much they're standing for their freedoms. Um, they're really engaged in the political process and spreading the word. They're knocking on doors and canvassing across the country, um, getting engaged politically. And I think the media just has it all wrong. America's young people absolutely love this country and they love President Trump. It just takes getting our message to them because the mainstream media isn't going to do it. They're going to tell the truth about the president. Yeah. But what's going on in this country, the accomplishments, um, and what's at stake. And it's uh, great efforts that are made um, with tremendous heart and information and facts to engage young people in free markets about conservative thinking and, frankly, about the common sense that makes up our America First agenda and the president's policies. You know, really trying to make sure they understand that the American dream is theirs to own and to strive for. Um, I cannot say enough about the tremendous job that the campaign, you know, is doing. And we continue to do so many fundraisers across the country, raising a lot of money. I got to tell you, every single day, because people care that everything's on the line from Supreme Court, you know, picks to the economy, the Great American Comeback is really underway with President Trump, and we need to keep this going. So I'm really encouraged by what we saw and all the stops that um, we made across the country. People are fired up, and we spent a lot of time, too, in blue states. And I don't know. <laughs> Red seems to be the new color, if you get what I'm saying. <laughs> Love it. I think that's a, 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 an amazing observation because you, know, you have this millennial generation, but I, I am in full faith and belief with you on our young, younger generation, the generation where my son is in, because they are so independent and they value their personal space. They value um, everything that is theirs and they do feel like they have the, the, these rights that are there for them. So I'm convinced that that generation is the correction. To the I also think, generation. Katrina, I, I think Each. they take the time to do their own investigation. Yeah, I think they, they take the time to find things out for themselves. They don't just take what they hear out there on television from the mainstream media and digest it as fact. They go out and they investigate and they Smart do their homework. And, and I think that's why. Questions. You're yeah. absolutely right. So I, I'm just, I'm like you, Kim. I'm confident this younger generation yeah, I'm, really I'm really going to be a force to be reckoned with. Uh, yeah. So Laura, you're out there as well. That's in California for Trump, in New Jersey, in New York. <laughs> like, we were all over the place, and it was like, whoa, I didn't see this in 2016, oh, yeah. and Don yeah. said the same yeah, thing. Yeah, I think, I think we're on a much better path um, now that the president has a record and has exposed, you know, so many things. I think you're right. I think the enthusiasm is far greater than it was in 2016, so that, that's exciting news. Uh, yeah. Laura, your final thoughts? Well, Katrina, you and I have been out on the road to, together for a couple of days now in North Carolina, and I have to tell the story of what we saw yesterday in the Target parking lot in Monroe, <laughs> North Carolina. Okay, 
So uh, for Kim and Mercy, unfortunately, you guys weren't with us. We missed you both. But we literally made an impromptu stop just off the highway to a Target because some of us ladies needed a few items. Okay, I knew you guys needed some beauty products. <laughs> usually, it's usually That's Flora that doesn't bring her earrings, and then she's like, "We gotta stop. I need earrings." And then we my earrings right broke in that trip. Yeah, they broke too. So we pull over, we stop at a Target, you know, yeah. totally unannounced. And by the time we went into Target and came out, now, mind you, we're on the bright pink women for Trump bus. But by the time we went in and came out, there was like a mini Trump rally in the parking lot. I'm oh, not fast. joking. These women were, and it was mostly women. They were out there. They had Trump flags that they, I guess, stashed in their car. One woman had a banner, like a <laughs> Trump banner. I'm like, oh, my God. We came out. I said, what is this? They were just so excited to see the bus there, to be able to meet us. We took photos with them. We chatted with them for a few minutes. It was so amazing. But this is what Joe Biden doesn't have. This is what the media doesn't see. This is what pollsters are not accounting for. These are the people out there who love this country. They love this president so much they're carrying flags in the car and they see us at Target and they whip them out. It was really amazing. I mean, I can't tell you in my home state to see that, how, how much I loved it. But, um, but just, I think, a testament to what's really going on out there in the country. And I think you guys are right, Kim. I get people from New Jersey who are, like, every day telling me, New Jersey's going red. New Jersey's going red. <laughs> Look, we'll see you on November 3rd. I said oh, last God. night at our, at our event, Katrina, I'm telling you. I said, I want the map totally red, like the Verizon map, all red. All exactly. red. That's what we're going for November 3rd. That was our event last time in New Jersey. It was bananas. The whole streets lined. Yeah. Street, people going crazy. I hope so. I can't wait to see more liberal heads explode if like yeah. any of these blue states go red. It, I also want to, when you have your, all of the social media posts, right? People are yeah. like, come to my state, and it's all these blue yeah. states, and the support is just there, and it's organic, and it's just really exciting to see. And, you know, that's why we're all so lucky to, to play this small role um, in history and, and helping a man who really laid it all on the line and gave up everything to fight for us. And so now it's our turn to fight for him. So thank you all for your final thoughts, and thank you all at home for joining us tonight. And tune in seven nights a week for more Team Trump Online. And we will see you next Wednesday on the next episode of The Right View. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and we will see you next time. And make a donation to Trump. <laughs> <laughs>